How's it going folks and welcome back. Today we have the first of hopefully many season recap videos here on the channel. For those of you who aren't in the know, I live stream Football Manager over on Twitch. There'll be a link down in the description. And at the moment, we are doing a save over in Iceland. Now, for those of you who are aware, we have a second channel where I've been uploading the stream VODs. These are full length videos of the streams unedited. If you want to see me just play Football Manager as I normally play it, you can go check that out. I thought, however, it'd be nice to provide on the main channel condensed seasonal recaps. So this is the recap for season number one. Uh, the plan is that as each season wraps up, we can do a little summary here in kind of 10 to 15 minutes, talk about what's been going on, key signings, key turning points in the year, and then maybe throw in a few clips of, uh, you know, extracts from the stream. Because usually the streams are a really, really good time. I can't encourage you enough to maybe go and check out the Twitch channel or the second channel if you want to see them all in full. And uh, well, here we are at our football club. Fjolnir, uh, a team who play in Iceland. Now, I fully appreciate not everyone's managed in Iceland, so I think a good starting point is to explain what the Icelandic season is like. So first things first, the Icelandic league season runs from May until September. So, yeah, it's a very, very short season in terms of length, with a very compressed schedule made up of 22 league games. For our first year here at Fjolnir, we are starting in the first division. It's a league made up of 12 clubs, the Premier Division is also made up of 12 clubs and all of the teams in the nation right now are semi-pro. So with this save game, my plan is to make Fjolnir a force in Icelandic football, hopefully raise the profile of Icelandic football, get you know far in Europe, hopefully generate some revenue for the league through just increase of reputation and seeing other teams within the nation doing well. And the end goal really is to try and win a Champions League with Fjolnir, maybe become Iceland manager and try and really achieve some success with the national team, which, uh, I mean, how hard can it be? Now, as well as the league, there are a couple of domestic competitions within Iceland. The first is the Icelandic League Cup A. I don't know why there's an A on the end of it. There is no Icelandic League Cup B, so I'll let you go figure. Either way, the Icelandic League Cup A is basically a competition made up of teams from the top two leagues, the top 24 teams in the nation. It is a competition that holds absolutely no significance, no importance whatsoever, no prize money, no, actually, yes, I've lied there. There is prize money. It's £1,500, so it, it might as well not be any. There's no continental spots or anything. Essentially, it's just a celebration of Icelandic football to start the year. The cup competition that we perhaps need to pay a little bit more attention to, however, is the Icelandic Cup. This is kind of the big traditional knockout domestic cup. You can see there are a lot of rounds. Now, a couple of interesting things to note about Iceland that are going to make this save game maybe a little bit more challenging. First things first, in both the top and the second division, there is not allowed to be more than three non-EU players in your playing 11. So you have to have at least eight EU players in your team. And on top of that, when it comes to squad registration, you have to have a minimum of eight players trained at your club for three years. That's right, you have to have eight homegrown at club players in your team. That might sound really simple to some, but as you're advancing and trying to compete in Europe, maintaining a conveyor belt of homegrown at club players is going to be challenging. We are going to have to focus our recruitment on younger players and also, as Fjolnir manager, really make use of our facilities, which for this level, and indeed Iceland as a whole, are really, really good. Uh, I believe that Fjolnir in real life are a sports club. They have lots of different sports teams in different disciplines. The football club wasn't set up that long ago. And to be honest, if we just look at Fjolnir, they're not exactly a team with the richest of histories in the world. They have won the Icelandic first division before. They have played in the top division of Iceland. They have also finished runner-up in the Icelandic Cup on two occasions. But besides that, they've never had massive success at the elite level in Iceland. Financially, nothing too spectacular going on. We have just finished our transfers for the first season, which I'll talk about in a second. But you can see, looking at things here, we are spending over our wage budget, which is slightly less than ideal. We weren't actually given any transfer budget for the start of this first year. So a lot of the squad building has really revolved around making use of what's already at the club. And we have started to do that already. In terms of key players to be aware of, we've got here Goodmundir for Juliusson, who is a left-back slash centre-back slash centre-defensive mid. To be honest, with seven jumping reach, I'm a little bit scared to play him at centre-back. Elsewhere in the team, we've got Hakan Inge Jonsson, who is perhaps our best striker. 14 finishing, 14 acceleration, 14 pace. Lots of 14s. He's super consistent. Unfortunately, he, uh, he hates important matches. So probably not going to be the big game player for us. 
I think the striking department is actually where we have a lot of strength. We've got Victor Andre Hafforsen here. He is a great little striker, very technically gifted, pretty quick, slightly concerned about the fact he's injury prone. And to make up our trio of strikers, we've got the second best Jonsson. That isn't his actual name. That is a nickname. Um, he's very good too. Again, quite technically gifted, not quite as gifted kind of, I guess, physically and speed wise compared to the other two strikers we've covered but I am looking at these three to be a trio of strikers for us in this 4-3-3 narrow system, which, I'll be honest, it's not the prettiest of systems, but if we just look at our squad depth and positions, you might be able to notice here there's kind of a lack of wide attacking options in the team. In fact, there's no wide attacking options, and we have about 10 different really defensive centre mids here. Players like Snorrison, Leoson. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're good and they're quick and they can win the ball back. There is very little playmakery ability in this team. There are maybe two exceptions to that. The first of which is Carl. Um, again, that is a nickname. His actual name is Goodmundir Carl Goodmundson. I just think Carl sounds a bit cooler. Um, he's one of the most creative players in our team with seven vision. And perhaps the other creative player that we've got in our team who is going to be pretty big for us this year is Ori Forhausen. 19 years old, looks like he could have a fair amount of talent with some decent potential. 14 vision, 13 passing for this level should make him very, very good. Now, in terms of the club vision for this first season, in real life, Fjolnir have just been relegated as at the start of this save game in April 2021. So the board expectation is to try and bounce back immediately. They want a top three finish in our current league. Only the top two teams go up. So we are going to have to surpass those expectations slightly. And if we look at the season preview, you can see here IBV and Fram, the two teams we've got to be wary of this year. In terms of our team, um, you can see here the projected lineup is that 4-3-3. And in terms of players in the Media Dream 11, well... We have one, and it's Goodmanson, a player who is a loyal servant to the club. He is, I believe, our captain. I'm certainly going to make him captain soon. He's been at the Fjolnir side his entire career, played in the Premier Division with them, stuck with them through a couple of relegations now. And uh, yeah, bit of a fan favourite. I'm hoping he's going to be one of our favourites too. Now, whenever you come to a new club, it's important to put your own stamp on it. So we did make a couple of signings for the year and the first team. The first, Asamoa Gyan. Remember this guy? You might remember him. He played at a few World Cups with Ghana, and he also was Sunderland's record transfer back in 2010 for 13.75 million. Now, I'll be honest, he has seen better days, now aged 35, and there are a few negatives to him, but it's Asimo Gian. 109 caps, experience, a backup striker needed if we're going to play the free striker system, and he's the man for us. Elsewhere, the other player we've picked up is Arna Dari Pettersson to play goalkeeper. This man is an absolute unit of a goalkeeper. I'm hoping he's going to be good for us. Our other goalkeeping option was this guy you can see here, Hadarsson in blue. And whilst he's not a bad goalkeeper at 20 years old, he is on £250 a week, which hurts a little bit to look at. In the end, Pettersson just represents value for money, a decent upgrade, and I just kind of like him a lot. For £150 on a free transfer, I feel like we've strengthened the goalkeeping area, which there wasn't necessarily a question mark over, but we definitely didn't look great in pre-season having Hardarsson in goal, where you might have spotted it. We did play in the Icelandic Cup, and, uh, well, we finished fourth. We got two wins against the two teams in our division. Against the big boys, though, not so successful. FH ended up making it out of our group. So I feel like that is a nice little opening intro to Fjolnir. Now you should have a good idea of some of the players, the formation we're playing, the signings that we've made, the situation we find ourselves in. We are now going to jump forward to the end of the first season. Over on my second channel, all the Twitch VODs have been updated and uploaded for the first season. So if you don't want any spoilers, you don't want to know how the season ended, maybe you want to experience the journey in all its glory, you can go over there. And uh, well, before we get to the end of the season, I think we'll put in some clips of kind of how the season went just on the whole. So enjoy those. I'll see you for the end of season bit where we'll have a reflective look and see, did we match the board expectations? Did Asimo Gian end up being worth it? And uh, yeah, did we get a good youth intake? With these facilities, I'm hopeful. Hey, Wispy, I'm doing good, thank you. Although, oh, he's hit it. I don't believe it. I don't believe, I'm, I'm, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Come on, my son. That is, I mean, it's shambolic, isn't it? It's shambolic.
I need a yogurt. I need a yogurt. Any Monaco predictions? Someone asked me this already, Waldo. I, I really dislike Monaco. <laughs> I, I've said it. I just don't think it's a very good race. Don't get me... Carl! If I don't unpause, he doesn't get sent off. Oh, good Johnson. Forward. He's got to score this. Come on! Let's go! Oh, my word. It is actually 2-2 in their game. Wait, so if they got a goal and we conceded, they'd go above us. We still have to hold on here. We're up. It's done. Come on. That's it's not a good promotion. It's not a promotion worth celebrating. But we take it. My, oh my, oh my. Ladies and gentlemen, Fjolnir will be playing in the Premier Division next year. That's right. We did get promoted season one. We did it by the skin of our teeth in the end. We were really, really confident this year. Obviously, media prediction was third. In terms of past positions, you can see here we were top of the league for a lot of the 22-game season. However, we did nearly bottle it right at the very end. In fact, if we just look at our form to end the season, we got two wins in our last seven games. Yeah, it was it was not convincing. We scraped by on the final day, beating Vikinger 1-0. If we hadn't won that game... There was a risk that we didn't get promoted, which would have been the bottom of all bottles, but I'm pleased to say we did manage to do it. And as you can perhaps see by the fact that we have a player in both the highest ratings, the most goals, and most player of the matches, there's kind of one man to thank for this, and it's the second best Janssen. Um, you might be sat there thinking, Jack Shelley, you should rename him the best Janssen now, if he's better than the other Janssen. Um, no, I feel like that would remove his powers. If I, if I rename him now, maybe he won't play as well next year. Of course, we are going to be taking a step up this year. This man's going to be pretty critical to our success. I will just say at this midpoint in the video, if you are enjoying this, you want to see more seasonal recaps, support the video, leave a like. If you've got any comments with regards to feedback or just your thoughts on the team and how I've done with them in this first year, leave it down in the comments. Let's feed the YouTube algorithm. If we could hit... A thousand likes, that would be nice. I don't know if that's reasonable or not. Let's go for it. A thousand, make it happen. Maybe, please. Oh, I need to pay the bills and editing Jack. The worst Johnson has been created. I mean, hackening Johnson didn't roll off the tongue. Let's be honest, he's not been as good as the second best Johnson, the guy in green here. When you compare the two, they should be complementary to one another. And whilst he did start the season well with three goals in the Icelandic Cup and three in the League Cup, Eight goals in 22 for a man this good, a player who I really thought was going to be our big game player, was a disappointment. Now, I appreciate this is a little bit confusing, but perhaps the surprise package of the year was another Janssen. Yeah, there's three of them in the team. It's a bloody nightmare. I now know how my teacher at school felt when there was three Jacks in the class all the time. Uh, Hacken Inge Janssen is one. We have Val Valdemar Inge Janssen as well. Uh, this is it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. This man, right back, absolutely sensational for us this year. He can't defend. He has no concept of what defending is. But this year at right back for us, a 7.31 rating, four player of the matches in the league alone from right back and six assists. His deliveries into the box were very important as we were playing that narrow 4-3-3 system. His ability as one of the, the more creative wing backs in the squad to get forward and put balls in was vital to our success. Now, over in the Icelandic Cup, unfortunately for us, we did crumble a little bit when we got knocked out. We lost to Valor. Now, for people who aren't familiar with Icelandic football, which I have to assume is a fair few people, Valor are very good. They went on to eventually finish runners-up in the competition. They have players like Aaron Johansson, who actually started his career at Fjolnir once upon a time. He was not kind to us. He scored against us. Um, and you can see just how good he is compared to some of our players. Uh, Valor are one of the most successful teams currently in Iceland. They've just won the league for the fourth time in the last five years in the save game. They've got some very, very good players. We actually have marginally better facilities than them, but that doesn't help us in the immediate term. And ultimately, um, yeah, they were just better than us and knocked us out of the cup fairly early on, unfortunately. Of course, the big thing this year was just to get promoted. Whilst I wanted to do it personally, the board weren't expecting it. They're delighted that we managed to achieve it. Going into next year, they're expecting us to fight bravely against relegation. The Premier Division is a bit of a jump up in terms of the wages that we're currently spending, which if we just have a quick peek, uh, sits at, well, close to £5,000. Um, 
are not very competitive for the division. In fact, even if we spend all of our wage budget that's been available, which is nearly doubled after our promotion, we are still going to be the lowest spenders in the league. So yeah, it's a big step up for this coming year. But who knows, if we can recruit as well as we did with Asamoah Gyan, maybe we have a chance. This man... I'm not giving him a new contract. I'm sorry. If you're a fan of his, I'm going to break your heart here. His contract runs out at the end of the month on £150 a week. He's not getting any younger. 35 years old. He got seven goals in 22. He had a few memorable matches. He did start to slow down quite a lot by the end of the year. Maybe my insistence to continue to play him one of the reasons we struggled in the tail end of the season. Uh, I just feel like we can do a little bit better than Gian. So uh, yeah, thank you for the memories, but it is time to go. Now, in terms of our youth intake for the year, apparently it was a good intake. I was very underwhelmed by it. Our best player, a right midfielder. Just as a reminder, we don't play with wide midfielders. This man, apparently the best of the bunch. He's unambitious, has free determination, is inconsistent. There's lots of negatives, but at least he can run fast, Eggertson. Um, yeah, I'm hoping we have a bit more luck with this in future seasons. All in all, though, a really successful first season. There's going to be lots of pressure on us with this step up to the Premier Division now. In terms of my plans going into the new season, we have already started to make a couple of transfers, players we've signed for free who are going to be joining us, um, really doing some bargain hunting. We'll talk more about those players next time. But from a tactical point of view, I am looking for maybe a shift in system. I feel like playing free strikers is probably a little bit bold. Quite how we're going to line up, I'm not sure yet. I have looked at maybe playing a 4-4-2. It might be that we go a bit narrower and go to kind of a 4-3-1-2, maybe even a 4-1-2-1-2 diamond. I think a lot of the, the factors at play really come down to the kind of players that are available. But as you might have spotted from these players who are green and coming in on trial, uh, they all are players who can play centre mid. So it is kind of looking like we will play a narrower style of play next year, maybe without the, uh, well, without the wingers that you saw just a second ago. As you perhaps saw in the stream highlight kind of section of this video, one player who had a season to forget was Victor Andre Hafforsen. 20 years old, one of our best hot prospects. He went and got injured for a very long time. In fact, he's still injured now. He's been injured for the entire season. He started the season so well. Two goals in two games and an assist in that time. An 8.0 rating and then his knee went bang and we had to deal without him. And it was right after the transfer window closed. So it was an absolute nightmare. It did scare me a little bit. The sad news for him is that really it has impacted his ability to develop this year. Turns out if you're not playing football, you're not going to get better. I am hopeful that he's going to be able to recover and be part of the first team next year. But as you can see, we're in October and he still could be out for three months. But anyway, gang, that is a summary of season one at Fjolnir. I hope you've enjoyed this little look into the save game. If there's anything that you'd like me to show that I've not shown in this video, please do let me know. Of course, this is a slightly different format of video I've not done in a little while. I kind of want to keep things condensed, but give you enough of a picture so that if you ever want to jump into the stream saves or maybe you want to hop over to the second channel and watch some VODs a few seasons in, you do have at least a rough idea of what is going on. Thank you for watching as always. I will see you guys over on Twitch and the second channel, hopefully in the near future. And until next time, take care. It is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.